I'm Paul Floyd, a military analyst here at Stratfor, and today I'm joined by Ashley Lindsay, who is a Middle East analyst. And today we're going to discuss the June 3rd Syrian elections. So Ashley, is the outcome of the elections on June 3rd even really in doubt? So the Syrian elections are set to take place tomorrow, and there are actually two other candidates, but they are pretty much just propped up by the Syrian regime, not very well known at all. The voting that has already taken place, the expat voting um, in places like Lebanon, where you have a lot of Syrian refugees, I mean, it's pretty much been boycotted there as well. And, um, you know, we have the Syrian National Coalition, the big opposition group coming out and denouncing these elections. And then inside of Syria, with all of the rebel groups and opposition fighters, um, all of these groups have instead pledged to ramp up their attacks tomorrow against the government in light of these elections. Although the government is trying to present somewhat that they are holding democratic elections, if you will, pretty much the international community and everyone inside Syria is well aware that uh, President Bashar al-Assad is going to win again. So it's not really, um, when it comes to Syria, it's not really these elections that are going to shape um, the outcome and what happens there. Okay, so with the elections kind of not in doubt and having no international legitimacy, why do they even matter? What we need to focus on um, is more so the foreign policy of the other countries that are involved inside Syria that have a stake in, in the country. And so we're looking at the U.S., Russia, Iran, Saudi Arabia, all of these countries and what their role is. Just last week, we had uh, U.S. President Obama give a commencement address at West Point, and he basically promised that Congress would ramp up all of its support to the Syrian rebels. We've also had reports that basically the U.S. is might be planning a campaign to train Syrian soldiers in Jordan. And the, the United States has basically given hundreds of millions of aid to the Syrian rebels um, in terms of just humanitarian aid and then also non-lethal aid. So that's your, um, you know, your night vision, your communications devices, body armor, that sort of thing. But they've also have had some covert CIA campaigns taking place as well. So we have had some degree of training of rebels already inside of Jordan and some delivery of non-sophisticated weapons to the rebels. And as usual, the problem with any sort of weapons delivery is that um, the United States wants to vet the rebels as much as they can so that they can only give them to the moderate, more secular-minded um, fighters and that sort of thing. But it's such a tough thing to do in this sort of situation. And um, although all of these weapons have been helping the rebels, um, you know, certainly any amount of weapons is going to help them in the fight against the regime. There are definitely some weapons that would be more helpful than others, which, I mean, I think you know more about than I do. Like the anti-tank guided missiles. Uh, so the advantage the regime has is an armor and an air power. Um, and so they've been asking for these anti-tank guided missiles, which they've gotten some of, but it's been limited. And that's probably the best way to describe the U.S. support for the rebels in general is there's been support, but it's been very limited and very constrained due to the vetting problems you referenced. Mm -hmm. The other thing they would like is manned portable air defense to try and deal with the Syrian Air Force. But like we saw with the Taliban in Afghanistan in the 80s, the U.S. is very reticent, and the entire national community is reticent to hand these weapons out because they can be such a potent terrorist threat, and no one wants to see that proliferate throughout the entire region around the world. So the other side of this has been Russia itself and, and its support for the Syrian regime. And while it's been more robust than the U.S. and Western allies in many ways, it still has kind of not crossed a certain line with its weapon deliveries. It's kind of satiated itself with, with just giving ammunition, small arms, whatnot. But it hasn't gone to the providing more armor or spare parts for these high-end weapon systems that really could potentially help uh, the Syrian regime dominate the rebels out of this kind of stalemate they've been locked in since then. And we know that Russia has also been basically aiding the Syrian regime in terms of trade deals and that sort of thing. And then on the other side, you have Iran, additionally, who has provided a lot of economic support to the Syrian regime. And that finds us actually in the middle of the, the other kind of interesting third party international thing that still relates to Syria is the U.S. and Iranian nuclear negotiations. Right. So this is something that's going to be very important to watch. You have the the nuclear issue, which is pretty much um, going, the talks are going pretty positively. But aside from that, there is the the sort of greater issue, if you will, of Syria. And um, this is something that Iran is very, is completely supports the regime. They have their interest in completing that Shia arc across Iran, Iraq, Syria, and they want to pursue those interests there and make sure that they still retain that influence. So that's going to be a key factor in these in these negotiations and in this rapprochement that we're seeing between the U.S. and Iran. And um, But at the same time, there is some sort of mutual and shared interest that we're seeing between the two. Uh, it seems as though both sides are really looking towards a political solution. Additionally, you know, we have 
the U.S., Iran, and Saudi Arabia all agreeing on the fact that no country wants to see these militants spread across, you know, out throughout the borders of Syria. So um, one of the main groups uh, that is considered one of the most dangerous is the Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant. And they are threatening to spread even further into Iraq. And that's something that obviously Iran does not want to see happen. And at the same time, you have the United States concerned about this group and uh, Saudi Arabia and about this group and others like it. It's very interesting. And it really, yeah, the, the, the Syrian conflict has shifted from getting rid of Assad's regime to containing and dealing with terrorism, which everyone can kind of seem to agree on within the region. So thank you very much. If you want any more further information on the Syrian conflict, please visit stratfor.com.